is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, there he is. Manny, how you doing, my friend? You doing good? Doing good, brother. Everything's great. How are you? Can't complain, bro. We got Bitcoin at uh, forty four thousand. Things are good. You're not. You're not in any crypto yet, right? Not yet. I, huh? I, I'm not, brother. I'm not. I've been. Uh, I'm into two little girls that require me to drive them to dance class every single day. Those are the two things that I'm most focused on, man. My two daughters. You might want to. <laughs> you might want to put a little Bitcoin on the side for them <laughs> down the line and uh, and set them up a little bit there. You know, a little, a little, a little savings account. You know yeah, it doesn't saying? hurt. Doesn't hurt. You know, and so, you know, you know, like simple, like, OK, not a financial advisor. I'm just saying like people have savings accounts, right? You mm -hmm. do you have a savings account? Yes. Yes. OK. What's it earning? Uh, I don't know. To be honest, I've I kind of leave that in the hands of other people. That's probably like a half bad, right? percent or something. Right. <laughs> Probably. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So there's something called stable coins, a USDC mm -hmm. coin, which is backed by the dollar. Mm -hmm. So every dollar you buy is backed by a dollar. Right. So it's a dollar mm -hmm. and you buy on you buy it like like let's say on crypto.com you buy it, you know, so you put your five hundred dollars you have in your savings account, you put it on there and you stake it, you get 10 percent. That's good. Just That's good. No risk. Right. Nothing. Nothing. It's a stable coin. It stays at a dollar. It's not moving anywhere. It's a dollar and you're getting 10 percent of that. that Obviously, you can go. You can invest on Bitcoin and Ethereum and other things, and you can make even more money and all that kind of stuff. But if you don't want to take any risk at all, you're like a person, no, 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 dude, I got my savings account. I'm fine and all that. Insured too. Boom. Put it there. It's 10% from your money just sitting there. You know, those are little Something things to think that about. people don't understand about decentralized financing now. And I think a lot of people are learning now after watching what happened in Canada, Ukraine, and Russia how they were able to control everybody's monies and all that stuff that if you had crypto, nobody can get to it. No government can get to it. You would always have your money. Dude, the ruble is worth a penny now. Can you imagine? Wow. Yeah, wow. exactly. Yeah. Scary yeah. stuff, man. I think that's why Bitcoin has shot up. Ukrainians, mm -hmm. Russians, Canadians, after experiencing what they experienced, are like, no, 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 no not doing this anymore i'm gonna put some of my money where it can actually grow and i have control over it not a government and that is some scary stuff man anyway all right so let's have some fun here jason taylor yes talk to me <laughs> because well, there's a lot of talk going on so how much is real how much is memorex talk to me well I, listen i didn't report this about three weeks ago, because I, I, what I was told when I initially asked was it's not going to happen. He's not going to be an assistant coach at the college level. He's an NFL Hall of Famer. He's got plenty of money. Being a guy who works around the clock chasing after kids that come to a college program is just not going to be something he does. So the focus, I think, shifted to be basically, can he become an analyst? Could he um, become a consultant? That type of deal. So I never took it as a big deal because I knew from the get-go, from talking to people at St. Thomas Aquinas that I know very well, it just wasn't going to become an assistant coach type of deal. So I didn't think it was that big of a story. Um, Ed Reed working with the Hurricanes, what did we learn about that situation last year, right? I mean, he's just – he pops in when he wants to. And that's different than being a hands-on coach um, and being a part of a staff where you're game planning and doing everything else. So I think, um, I think in this case – uh, it's a sexy name to throw out there. Mario likes sexy names, right? He's he's hired a lot of sexy names and guys that have big reputations in this business. Um, but I just didn't see it be, uh, becoming a reality. And it's up to Jason. Ultimately, he's got he's got other kids, you know, playing college football in other places. So if he wants a consultant type job or analyst type role where he doesn't have to be in the building every single day and recruiting every single day and can pop in when he wants, then it's up to him. But as far as how that's progressing, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know where they're at. I just know when I asked about it three weeks ago, when the rumor first sort of surfaced that Mario was was having conversations with him, um, the initial response I was given was, no, that's not going to happen because he's just not going to be a, a college assistant. And, and a lot of former great players don't want to make that kind of commitment. They've got a life. They've got other things that they're into, right? And and they've made a ton of money. And they're, they're not desperate like a lot of other coaches are, that, that they need a paycheck uh, and, and move from one sort of job to the next. So. That's the way I understood the situation. 
Right. No, I, I get it. And he would be a guy that I would like for recruiting purposes, actually, because that, that, that would be a guy oh, that yeah. probably could walk in a room and win people over. But if you can't use him as a weapon like that, then it's not as maybe, you know, Mario doesn't need that much help in certain area, areas like that. Well, no, I mean, listen, no I think, I think you. I think he was trying to convince him to become an assistant coach, and I think it was pretty clear early on that that wasn't the case. Now, I think would he still love to have him on staff the way he has Ed Reed around or the way Mar uh, Manny Diaz had Ed Reed around and Ed, Re Ed Reed is still involved? Would he like those kind of people to be around the program to help influence recruits? Absolutely. I think Mario's entire deal throughout this entire process has been, I want recruits to say the best staff in college football is at Miami. That's what he wants. He wants everybody, that, that opinion to get out there. Hey, you go to Miami, you're going to be around great coaches and great people. Um, so I think that's where the attraction with, with Jason Taylor lies. And we'll see if he ends up joining the staff in some capacity. I, I don't know if I've talked about this with you, but we've certainly talked about Alonzo Highsmith before, right? Having a role with the team. That's another name that's been out there for a while. You know, that, that is he going to come in in a GM, a football type role, that kind of thing. Um, I think all of that is going to work itself out. How many hours those guys have to be in the building will work itself out. But I think Miami is willing to spend what it needs to spend to get as many big name people involved in the program, whether it's a small role or a large role. And, you know, we'll see. I, I know this. He's still he's still interviewing for defensive ends coaches. I think he did interviews last week for that. Um, hopefully there's a decision soon, man, because spring football starts <laughs> starts in a week next Monday. So uh, he's going to have to hire somebody at some point to, to be the defensive ends coach and I think Steven Field, you know, the way everything has been sort of going right now, it looks like he'll be the tight ends coach again. And he's a great recruiter. I mean, he, he's recruited really good tight ends here since he's been here. Um, and I think, you know, I think that's the way they're going to roll out. But we'll see. Everything should be finalized, hopefully, by uh, by the first spring practice. Well, one thing I do know, Mario doesn't need a, a GM of football. That, that's, uh, that was for the other guy that needed training <laughs> wheels. This guy, right. uh, yeah, this guy's not going to have – he's not going to have any of that. Um, well, no, I mean, Alonzo, Alonzo, if he joins the staff and people have asked, well, what, what, do we, what would he do? Um, because the transfer portal has become such a big deal. Oh, I mean, this Alonzo's value could be in evaluating upperclassmen and identifying guys that Miami should go after in the transfer portal. Right. Or have conversations with before they go into the transfer portal, so to speak, if you get if you catch my drift. So. Uh, I think I think that's that's a role where he he would provide great value because he does that anyway. That's what he's been doing for 25 years, evaluating upperclassmen who, who are draft eligible. Talk to me about this coaching staff because that's kind of been the talk now. We've all after after everybody's you know not everybody but after so many were worried and complaining and bitching about how long it's taking and all this stuff. The the close to finished product has has impressed many. To the point that they're now comparing them to other hurricane staffs. So as a guy that has covered a lot of hurricane staffs and been around the hurricane football program for a long time and seen a lot of great staffs come and go. Right. We can't really put a ranking on this because until they actually do something, then maybe we can actually realistically compare them to others. So for now, how would you, grade out this staff how would you look at this staff how would you describe this staff strengths and possibly weaknesses to a um fan well i mean look first of all you have two former power five head coaches as assistants right and kevin Steele, who was the coach at baylor long ago and obviously charlie strong who's been the, the coach at uh, texas and louisville and south florida won national championships as a coordinator at florida so right off the bat on the defensive side of the ball, you have upgraded to a level that, as far as established coaches, I don't, I don't ever remember Miami having former head coaches, you know, that before coming to Miami, that they were power five head coaches, two of them on one side of the ball like that. I, I just, I, I'm trying to rack my brain. When did those guys, you know, it's kind of like, did they have guys who eventually became head coaches? Yes. Um, but did they have, you know, guys that were already head coaches at a power five school? No. So that is sort of the unprecedented. I think Josh Gaddis, without a doubt, is going to be a college football head coach, probably at a Power 5 program. I think he's just trending that in that direction. If not, maybe somewhere in the NFL. Um, and then you look at the rest of the staff and, and other guys that they have there. I mean, Mirabal is one of the best offensive line coaches in all of college football. 
He proved it. Uh, people, you know, who say, oh, well, he's been with Mario. No, uh, look at what he did at Marshall with Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday wasn't winning at Marshall and winning conference titles until Alex uh, Mirabal got there. And he took a bunch of no star kids and turned them into, you know, all conference type players, NFL type guys. Um, you know, Salabia. Yeah, yeah, and by the way, we kind of spent the last, you know, two years here talking about that with the Dolphins. Like, right. if you don't get an offensive line coach, bro, you're not going to get anywhere. No. And uh, yes, and, uh, and the good thing about that is the first guy, Ebbs, uh, uh, what did you say? What was um, what was the guy's name? Ebbs, Eves, what was the guy's name? The other guy you just talked about before that you might lose him as a head coach? I'm brain oh, farting uh, Gattis, Gattis. Gattis, Josh Gattis. 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 Yeah. So Gaddis, you might lose. The good thing is Mirabal, you won't. He's right. been with with Mario, and he'll stay with Mario as the O line coach. Whereas a Gaddis, okay, great, great young coach, potential. You may have you may have to replace him down the line. That's mm -hmm. the good thing man, because having great O line coaches at any level is just so enormous in football, dude. Oh, absolutely. Um, you, you need you need that more than anything else. A guy who could and, and the problem is the hardest position to recruit, in all honesty, is offensive line, because you you really don't know what kind of training that kid is getting at the high school level. And a lot of them aren't really trained to to perform. Most of them are just bigger than the guys they line up opposite against and they just dominate them based on size at the high school level. So you got to figure out when you're, you're recruiting these guys is how smart are they? How 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 much can I teach them? Um, and it's hard when you have limited interaction, right? Text messages, whenever they come on the official visit, you put them up on the board and you, and you have them go through play diagrams and, and that kind of stuff. But the reality is it's hard to really know how good those guys are until you get them in the door. So um, I think without a doubt, I mean, he's one of the best offensive line coaches in the country. And then, you know, on, on uh, tight end, Stephen Field is, like I said, recruiter. Uh, Frank Ponce, he's done a phenomenal job with uh, with quarterbacks in his time in college football. You know, uh, was at Louisville working with their quarterbacks uh, when Satterfield went over there and left Appalachian State. Then he came back to App State last year, first time as a play caller, and he turns Chase Bryce, who was terrible at Duke under David Cutcliffe, who is the quarterback whisperer, by the way, and he turns Chase Bryce into a top 35 quarterback. Uh, and the kid was like not even in the top 100 last at Duke the year before that. So he's a guy who knows how to develop players. He's a very good quarterbacks coach. So I think from from top to bottom, you look at the staff. Uh, oh, and, and how could I forget about the DBs coach who they got from Georgia? One of the best young rising coaches as far as assistants, a guy who's probably going to be a coordinator uh, in, in Jamil Adai. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you look at staff top to bottom. It, it is as good as any. I think in the certainly the ACC, I, I, I would say it's right there with Clemson staff and, and Clemson lost a lot of guys. Oh, well, that, yeah, I was just about to say that. I was I was about to tell you, is it with Clemson staff last year? Or yeah, I, I would say in the past to staff this year because they they lost their defensive coordinator, dude. To me, and, that's and the offensive. Yeah, no, I, I mean, mean they, yeah, yeah, but but losing that defensive coordinator that has been with him forever oh, yeah. and right. that guy easily could have had a head coaching job five seven years ago right that, to me that's an, a monster loss for them dude we'll see I, I i would say right now this coaching staff is as good as any as clemson had when it was winning the conference and going to, going to the college football playoff and playing in the championships i i would think it's on par with that between kevin Steele and charlie strong on the defensive side um again gaddis you know he, he was there as an offensive coordinator for three years at michigan and they got to the playoffs so I think, you know, it's just as good as, as what Clemson had when they were winning the conference. If not better, could be better in a year or two when we see where these guys end up and what they're doing. Any transfer portal news in or out, egress or ingress? Nothing as far as departures yet. Um, I think, you know, that's something you got to keep an eye on. Like I said, they're over the scholarship limit projected anyway uh, with the with the uh, with the eight summer arrivals. They'll be at like 88. Um, but they're also, you know, they're, they're after this, uh, they're after the defensive end that I told you about last Friday, um, Agude from UCLA. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think they're always looking for help, man. Like to me, you know, they've signed 20 kids, um, six transfers, 14 high school signees. I think Mario, I think the roster continues to change. And I've said this to you before on the show. I think, you know, as guys become available, 
And as guys enter the portal and decide, hey, I'm leaving this school, it's all going to be about who jumps on them first and who can make the best impression. And I think they're very vigilant of it. They're very vigilant of who's who's popping in. So I would say at any moment, things can change the moment we see guys pop in in the treasure portal. Um, West Virginia just lost their their uh, li- one of their starting linebackers who just went into the portal. He's another guy. Daryl Porter Jr. just got here, right? I mean, he could tell them, hey, come come join me at Miami. So No, um, I- no. No. <laughs> Do you so, know the story? Uh, yes, you told me about Porter. Yes, Daryl Porter Sr. No, 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 no. I'm talking Which about one? the West Virginia kid. No, what's the story with him? Do you know the story? Oh, dude, I got it. Oh, this is this is a great story. Okay, tell okay. Me. Uh, you're talking about Josh Chandler uh Semedo, not right? Right. Okay, this is a story I was saving for later on the show, but all right, you 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 got me Go now, ahead. so I might as well say it. So <laughs> just in case, because he brought it up now, right? So just in case, Kings fans, if they bring it up, here's what you're getting. Okay, so the six foot one, 250 pounder, 215 pounder, signed with West Virginia in the class of 2018. He's been a three year starter at linebacker for the Mountaineers in December. He made everybody seem that he was happy when he announced he was returning to Morgantown for his final year of eligibility. In January, he took to Twitter to inform his followers he was looking for an SUV truck. Says, uh, I'm looking for an, a new SUV truck in the West Virginia pit area. Any good references? So all of a sudden, a dealership stepped up. And he, Toothman Ford stepped up so he tweets out let's give a big west virginia shout out to our guy him a tackling machine in 2021 and running it back in 2022 inking up his nil deal with team toothman from ford well a little over a month later after signing his nil deal and taking some money chandler simabo would again head to twitter to announce he would be heading into the transfer portal so I was actually going to ask you a question about Go ahead. the <laughs> tracks of the NIL and how this, in the end, also will start to scare away your potential sponsors or people that are willing to give money because ROI is very important, as we all know. Absolutely. And as a guy that is building something here that's I got to handle the business side of it. You know, uh, sponsors, they like ROI. They want return on investment. And so I don't think that Ford dealer got a lot of return on their investment. (laughs) So I'm just saying, this is the NIL. These are the kids. This is the transfer portal. These are, I mean, this guy said he was returning. He needs a car. A month later, he gets his car and he's gone. I mean, you can't, you know, come on, dude. It's crazy. Well, I, I would say this. Um, every NIL deal, and, I, and I've and i been covering a few different ones here recently, uh, including our, our boy Chase Smith, who uh, signed with Edge Energy Drink. Got, yeah, right. He's got, got, got the edge. edge. That's yeah. right. He's got the edge. Um, I Every one of these deals, though, I mean, they, I'm sure there's always a sticking point, right, where the, where, where the guy giving the money and the goods can back out of it if, if uh, the deal's broken. So I'm sure he's got to return that car. But what I, what I will say about this kid is if he's one of the best linebackers in the country, there'll be another 10 dealerships waiting to line up <laughs> and hook yeah. him up with a car in whatever city he decides yeah. to go to. So, And down here uh, in South Florida, by the way, Williamson Cadillac for years has had a great deal with the Hurricanes, right? So, uh, you know, maybe he trades in uh, whatever it was that he got. It was a that. Ford. A Ford. It was a Ford. Ford for a caddy. I don't know. I think he'd probably consider that an upgrade. Um, we'll see, man. I, I, I love this kind of stuff, though, because instead of being behind the scenes, right, which is what we always oh, yeah, do as reporters, right, just, right now it's just like I'm going on Twitter and saying, hey, man, you know what? I'd love a new car. Who's going to step up to the plate for me? And Boom. Boom! It's taken care of, and uh, and so now it's all in, in the public. I, by the way, I, I'm gonna see if I can go and attend one of these commercial um, uh, for for John Ruiz and and his Life Wallet product. I'm gonna see if I can go watch these kids do some of these commercials so I can chat with them a little bit. But it, it's amazing how many of these kids, like you know, like I, you and I have talked about this before off arrow. 
the way the colleges try to shield these kids from doing interviews, from talking to the public, from doing, and every one of these kids now that I talk to because of the NIL, they're unbelievably sharp. They're really good. They they love answering questions. They like participating in it. But the colleges, man, like just k- killing off media access because they want to, right? Because they just don't want the kids talking and saying something mistaken. Oh, well, they're afraid. They're afraid right. of now. It, 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 they, they don't want to be specifically tied to it like that. So they let the kid get tied to it. So that way it's they, they can detach themselves as much as possible for just in case the NCAA wants to come down on people and say, hey, well, listen, man, we didn't. This is the rules that, that, that were set up right. and we're not part of it. So right. you know, but- I think they're trying to distance themselves as much as possible so right. they can try to clean their hands as much as they can if the crap hits the fan. That's, oh, at least that's my guess. Absolutely. But what I was saying is if you think about, you know, how many for how many years we've dealt with them cutting off access to us, to these players. And now all of a sudden these kids are getting an opportunity to market themselves by going on podcasts and going on shows. The benefit that they get from that to be more accessible in the end, that to me, that far outweighs. I mean, they're getting all these NIL deals because they're a pitch man, essentially, for 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 those companies, right? They've got to be right. public, They've, and and those companies are getting an opportunity now to actually have their name put out there. It's not just that ad, you know, when you go to a Canes baseball game or a, uh, or a basketball game that's that's hanging there and and nobody really pays attention to, right? I mean, this is this is real marketing, and it's great for these kids because it's going to help them as they grow. A lot of those guys, oh, you know, from covering the NFL. Being shut off to the world, no interviews. They're they're a disaster when they get to to the pros. They don't know how to handle right. media. They don't know how to handle how to market themselves. Now you can really see the difference just in a year, how much better these kids are at all of that, and how it's going to help them in the long run. What are you working on the athletics so folks can check you out, my friend? Well, uh, a lot of different things. One, I'll be driving up to Lakeland today to go see Mario's speech with uh to uh the Cormani McLean kid who's the five star linebacker he's gonna talk nice. to the so I'm driving up there to watch that and I'll, I'll write something off of that. Uh you know again football starts March 7th next Monday so we'll have practices and lots of preview content you know what are the big storylines heading into camp what's what do we need to watch for that, that kind of stuff and then recruiting I've talked to a ton of recruits here in the last like two weeks just going out to these uh under armor camps and uh uh, you know, guys on my podcast, the Wide Right podcast uh, interviews, Jake Lichtenstein, who's the USC transfer. He'll be on the podcast soon. So there's a ton of content, man. There's a uh, there's a ton of stuff that I'll be having uh, coming out here in the next week. Looking forward to it. As always, subscribe to The Athletic, folks. You know, Manny is the best. Great coverage, as always. Great insight. Follow him on Twitter if you want the edge on the Canes at Manny underscore Navarro and catch him here twice a week with our Canes wear Miami Hurricanes report, which, by the way, Manny, we're doing a special show on Saturday. It's a short one, 11 to 1, but we're leading right up to the Tyler Van Dyke signing at Canes. We're in Davie. Absolutely. Yep. By the way, you are welcome to come by <laughs> yes. and join us on the show and then watch the craziness. Yeah, I don't know. I get some work done there. There is the starting quarterback there. You might be able to ask him a, a question yeah. or two. You know what I mean? Well, you know, I, I might. You know, I, you know, Brett might give you a little extra access since you're in the family. So. There you go. That there you go. I appreciate it. Oh yeah, I would you love to. all the hookups, bro. Edge, Canes, where you're. You're set, bro. You're set. I am, bro. Set. I am. And we're, and we're, wait till the show. We're 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 working on it, baby. We're that's, working. That's on getting it. there. Yep. Yeah, it's getting there. We're going to get there. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, my brother. I appreciate you as always. Thank you. All right, man. Take care. I'll see you. You got it. The great Manny Navarro, as always, joining us here a couple times a week. And and remember, Saturday, we, we are on six days a week this week. Uh, Saturday, it's a short show. We're only doing two hours, uh, 11 to 1. Uh, but we're going to be out there promoting, obviously, Kane's Wear. And for those of you that don't know, Tyler Van Dyke is is signing and you gotta you gotta buy your tickets for the meet and greet at Canesware because it's gonna get crazy so you may want to call them at 954-835-5597 if you want to get your pass to uh you know you can they have the stuff there so you can buy and sign um certain things that they're going to be able to sign so you can check it out there at Canesware so if you want your uh, chance to meet Tyler Van Dyke and hey man this kid clearly has the goods to go to the NFL. 
So if he somehow becomes an NFL star and you met him there at Canesware and you got a picture or he signed something for you, you know, that's going to be worth a lot down the line. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.